virtual reality. A virtual reality, not reality. Because in this world that we all experience and share, it's always on change. Everything is always constantly changing. And it's always changing because we're always changing our thinking and that makes the new products of everything that's advertised everywhere. Attitudes. It's our attitudes about our own thinking, feeling process. As you think you are. If that's the, if that's the case, that as you think you are, then thinking lovely and of good report would be the exact thing you want to be doing. And you say, well, I can't be that conscious. No, we're not, we, we know you're not that conscious. But I, I know in a day's time, if you, if you get 15, 20 minutes of actually thinking on things that are lovely and of good report and has, has your, because what has your attention has your life. And once you see that it's making an improvement in your everydayness, then you'll be more interested to lengthen the time that you're thinking feelingly about whatever and be aware of what it, it, it pertains to because, believe me, it, you will be experiencing it. I mean, all you have to do is look at all the nonsense that came up in your world and all you have to do is admit that you thought about it and then you found the secret of how to cause a desired change because it's creative either way, on the negative side and on the positive side. It's all positive if you deem yourself to make it so. It is for you and it is for everyone else that you share it with. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're trying to share it with you. but. It's you who has to experience it. Right now, all we're giving you is knowledge, your own knowledge, the knowledge you left for yourself. You see, you, you, you were not driven out of heaven as it is. No, no. You came down voluntarily because love forces nothing. You're not being forced anything. It's as you think you are. Not God's fault what you're thinking because he gave you whatsoever to think from. And seeing that it's whatsoever, there's just a lot, a lot of room in there, isn't there? There is. You know, you said quite a bit and I enjoyed listening to you. You know, you started off stating that we're operating from a virtual reality. Many of the people listening to these talks understand that fully because many of them or on their phones, or they're on their, their computers, and they're playing these virtual games. So Mr. Lindo has given you the tools, the keys for your virtual game. He says, if you want to stack up points, go into the virtual game, play it for a moment, and what you'll find is benefits. As you begin to get those benefits, you'll score some points, and you'll say, well, let me play it a little bit longer inside the virtual reality. You operate the virtuality by way of your feelings, your states, your thoughts, your emotions. And as you continue to operate that virtual reality called your life, your mind, you're going to outpicture the lifestyle that you desire. Is that correct? That is correct. How you view your world, with what attitude you are viewing your world, is what you are experiencing. So if you have negative attitudes, <laughs> I can't, can't imagine anyone who doesn't, but if you have negative attitudes, they're going to come up. They're going to keep bubbling up in your world. And as they do, they're causing you problems. But it's you who is maintaining them by keeping them in your thoughts because thoughts are things. And that's what your world is created out of, your thoughts, your world is your thoughts made manifest. And if you're going to make something manifest, why not focus on the better, the better, the better, whatever. If it is abundance, God has no problem with it. What do you want? He's not, he doesn't have a problem with whatever you want. He gave you 
whatsoever as a potential to choose from. And you are choosing from, you are praying from, or, or at. <laughs> yeah, that's what I find most people are praying at God, not to God. When you say, I would. I think that many times we call ourselves praying, and actually, what we're doing is we're, as you said, we're talking at God. We're telling Him, you know, what it is that we want, what we're going to do, and so forth. And we never find ourselves becoming what it is that we're claiming for ourselves. What are your thoughts? Yeah, but, but they but they are receiving. Yeah. See, they're still receiving because it's, maybe it's not what they wanted, but that's the whole thing. You went in there not expecting to get what you wanted. That's that's the difference that makes the difference. I am that is what your claim to God is. He's asking you. He said you you receive not because you ask not. Now it seems to me you you, you could clean that up right away, couldn't you? I think so. I mean, he's telling you, you're receiving not because you ask not. Well, start asking. But the asking is not begging. It's thank you, I have received. Isn't that the difference? That's the difference that makes the difference, getting into the state of having what it is that you desire. That's it. Look, if if the kid, kid for Christmas wanted to say, oh, bicycle. And they got the bicycle. That they had the bicycle before they ever got the bicycle, didn't they? Absolutely. You know, since we just recently passed Christmas, I've seen this manifested in the lives of, you know, the children in our lives. And the things, the requests that they put out there, they knew that they had them even before they received them. Even before the parents knew they had them, the children knew they had them. Would you agree? <laughs> The old man's looking through his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but that's a wrong attitude also. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to see how much. <laughs> see, it's not how much you spend, it's how much you make, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You know, and you bring about a good point, especially since we're on the theme of abundance. I almost see this abundance almost as a game if people, you know, we play the game of monopoly. And the same thing holds true. When you start to understand and begin visualizing, seeing yourself living from the state of that new car, that new house, that new relationship, better health, you're actually on your way to seeing that fulfilled in your virtual reality. Would you agree? Wholeheartedness. We all are seeking in varying degrees of intensity and intent. In most, it's a very low intent. Yes. But as you raise the bar, you raise self. That's so? That's so. I was talking to a young man recently, and he was talking about, in his country, Neville's teachings hasn't gone out. And so I told him that I saw him being the Neville Goddard of his generation. And this is the, the key. You have to, when Neville and both Joseph Murphy saw themselves in that audience, and there was only a few people in the audience, they saw the place packed. If you want to see life change, you have to see it from the state of what it is you want to manifest in your life. And you live from that, that as you called it earlier, that mood. Would you agree? That's the asking, right? It is. The, it, it's they're asking wrong. The, if they're not enjoying life, they've been asking wrong. If they want to start enjoying life, they have to start answering right. And that you're told if you would order your conversations aright, that's it. self-talk also. In fact, more self-talk because that's when we're, we feel we can say anything we want because only we hear it. Yeah. But understand, it's what you hear you say. That is important to you to understand because that's your life experiencing. And you're going to always be planting the seeds of negativity if you keep bringing up little scenarios of gloom and doom. 
And that's what people do. They sit in the silence, but their 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 mind is, is dreaming up just nonsense, really. I, I don't want to name anything because then they go after that. But it's it's the idea that I am in charge. But you have to take charge. You have to show up and take charge. You and that's that's how it is that you get started. Getting started is very difficult. It takes it takes the mind a change to do so. I will do this. Or you or you won't do that. But it, you always have the choice. God gave you choice. Choose this day. It's always this day. And you're in it. And you are choosing it. Why not choose it lovely and a good report, wouldn't you say? I would say, you know, you said some very profound things, and people need to be mindful. You know, you said, I will be that, or I won't be that. Whatever it is that you desire, you have to begin living it out. Like the young man that I spoke of a few moments ago, he has no doubt in his mind that he's changing lives. So he lives that out moment by moment. So he's going to manifest changing his portion of the globe simply because he's living it out now. People write in and they say that they're dealing with lack, they're dealing with illness, they're dealing with, you know, all these woes. And I apologize for naming some of these things, but the whole point is if that's your conversation, the only thing you can reproduce is more of that. You say, well, DeCarlo, I'm just being real. But you can change your reality by beginning to say, thank you, Father, for what it is you already have. What are your thoughts? That's it. It's getting started. Yeah. That's what it is. You have to get started. And what are you doing when you're starting? You're saving yourself. It's a self in self and risen drama. See, it says self in self, not not what the people around you think and feel about you. Being overly concerned about what people outside of you think of you, that's the beginning of a problem. It's a psychological drama. As within, so without. They are only thinking what you're thinking about you. And that thinking tells them more than you opening your mouth and speaking to them, wouldn't you say? Yes, and I want to share a story. I'm so glad that you said that. You said that they're only thinking what you're thinking about you. Back in the Old Testament, it was said that there were giants in the land. And in another place, it said that they saw giants in the land, and they were like grasshoppers to these giants. The people that they observed was just like them. But in their mind's eye, they saw themselves small. Because they saw themselves small, the people that they were interacting with saw them as small. And we have a society of people that want to get offended by so much. And yet what they refuse to see is themselves grand, see themselves great, see themselves as children, offspring of God. What are your thoughts? That's it. It's how you see yourself. I mean, I told there's two words, attitude and imagination. Attitude awareness and imaginational control is exactly that. It is control. And if you're in control, then everything's going to be all right because you're told it will be. And it's on, as I said, automatic. All you have to do is turn it on. And you turn it on by thinking feelingly because what has your attention has your life. And if your life right now, today, if it's not going as you'd like it to be, then you know for exact that it's the without that you're dealing with, and that's not the thing to deal with. It's the within. That's what you need to deal with, because the without only exists because the within has said so, and your say is a valid say. I mean, if it's valid, it's valid, and that's positive or negative. It's still valid. The ticket will let you in. That's it. Left to the left, to the right. You're in. You you got in. Thinking feelingly gets you in. But thinking feelingly about the right thing, see, 
that lovely and good report. It says that, but that means whatever you think is lovely and a good report, that's what you would report to self. Think about it. Think from it. That's the way it works, wouldn't you say? I would say, you know, and speaking of thinking of lovely and good report, many of you are going to be frustrated, and I've talked to some of you who are frustrated because you're looking at family members, loved ones, friends who don't get what it is that you're discussing. You have to remember you were where they were. We were where they were at one point. And so we didn't always get it. So you have to understand, as far as these principles go, they're children. And you have to be mindful as you share it with them, that you're sharing it with them at a level that they can understand. What are your thoughts? Yes, yes. You have to understand that that your thinking and feeling is actually creative. When I say it's creative, that means you have chosen to think about, and that makes it so. Thinking feelingly makes it so, whatever it is you're thinking about. So that's, that's really something that should be examined explicitly. I mean, it's always up to you. I will think this, I won't think that, but it's always up to you. You're making your life, your everydayness, out of what you're thinking feelingly about, because it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, so does he. And it says heart, because that, that's, that, that's also implying the feeling nature of man. You, you are on all the time, but in varying degrees of intensity and intent, and that's the difference that makes the difference in our world of experiencing, isn't it? It is. You know, and as we're speaking of but as we're speaking about being on all the time, you have to be mindful that we're not always mindful of what it is that we're giving our attention to at any given moment. So you could be thinking about abundance, but you could have a lack in health. You can have great health, but you can have a lack in abundance. You can have both health and abundance and be lacking as it were in a relationship. So be mindful of where it is that you're directing your attention to. What are your thoughts? That, that's all you're here to do. You're right. Absolutely right. You, that's all you're here to do is to direct your own inner conversations. And it is assumed that if you're choosing it, then it's what you want. But, you see, man, he, 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 he takes the good idea and, and, he, and he makes it into dust because he thinks upon it as uh, something he has to do, and that smacks of responsibility, and that causes the people to hide. So you do, you do to yourself, and you deny yourself thinking feelingly rightly. If a man will order his conversations right, and that's male, female, matey, then man. Yeah. If a man would order his conversations aright, I mean, that's it. What are you choosing? If you're experiencing it every day, and if it's not what you want, wouldn't it? Throw it in the trash can and think differently. It says, think only on things that are lovely and of good report. And I know I repeat that a hundred times, but that's the whole idea. It's because it's all on automatic. If you keep repeating it, it gets a little soaked up a little better and a little better into the brain. And after a while, it makes a mindset. And then you're in, you're in case if it's a good one because your mindsets operate automatically and, and you have nothing to do with it. But you're making the mindsets all the time as what you think you're giving life to. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he, so does he, so has he. You're making your world moment by moment. I think you should, if you want to do some, sit down and silently and think that you're making your world moment by moment as you think you are, you do, you have. Is that not true? It is true. You know, and I want to finish a statement that you were going to uh, say, and I know that the listener has heard it before, but I want to add to, you said if a man, woman, would order his, her conversations aright, 
in the end of that that you didn't add this time, but you normally do, is they will be shown salvation. And I want to bring this point about what is it that you want? And Mr. Lindell just gave you the secret. Whatever it is that you want, order your conversation, your thoughts on that. Begin living from that, being that, and you will be shown salvation. Salvation is the manifestation of the thing that you want to manifest in your life. What are your thoughts? I mean, look, look at it this way. You, you have a diagram on the table, and you're looking at the different things in that that to make it to build it. Well, that, that's the same thing you're doing with your confidence. When you think of having these things that you wanted as I am that, now you see that, that's the secret, I am that. Don't, don't, don't concern yourself as to how it's to be made so. That's God's part. Jesus tells us very plainly, I of myself can do nothing. So therefore, <laughs> if Jesus can do nothing for himself, it's God who does all the work. All he does is say, thank you, Father, which is, he's telling him, thank you, I got it. And that's what you're to do. It's exactly, you're, you're told that you should pray like he prays. And he, he, the only reason he, he actually form, formed a, a, a prayer was, was to let man know that because you do that, then you know how you're asking. And if you see that you've been asking as more or less begging rather than thank you, Father, for I have it, that's the difference that makes the difference, isn't it? It is. It is. You know, you said some key things. You said you operate from I am that. And we say it often, but you do it 70 times 7. You keep saying I am that to till it becomes real to you. Mr. Lindo said it earlier. He said, you do it at first, you know, you may not believe it, but then it begins to saturate the brain. And then pretty soon it becomes a habit. And he says, habits rule your life. So you keep saying, I am that. You begin owning that you are what it is that you desire to manifest in your life. Now, at first, it's going to seem like a false statement, a platitude, as somebody said to me recently. But as you keep saying it, soon enough, it's going to become your reality. What are your thoughts? That's it. It, it. it is exactly what you said. It's just a platitude. Until you give feeling to it. You see, that that's what subconscious goes by as building your world of experiencing is, is how you feel. It's your emotion is movement out from. And that's exactly what is making your world as it is right up to this very moment. And you can cause it to change. By changing your mind, change your mind, change your world. It's as simple as that. You're, all you're to do is exactly what Jesus was pointing out, that he himself could do nothing. So that, that, that meant that he's using the choice that God gave him on whatsoever. He gave him the power and whatsoever for it to use it. And he did exactly the same thing to you. He gave you the power and you are experiencing it. But what are you experiencing? If you can't change it, but you can. I have people tell me, but you can't change what you believe. Well, that's ridiculous. I mean, you've been changing what you believe every year since you were a, a, a baby. You change your mind, you change your world, of course. I mean, you couldn't walk, and then you could walk, and then you could run, and on and on and on. But the thing of it is, is that it's as you think you are. All you have to do is discipline yourself to think only on the things that you want. Only on the things that I am that can be once you've decided what it is that you've chosen, this is what I, I'm choosing. Now I have it. That was all. It's, it's, that, it's that. That's the difference that makes a difference right there. Wouldn't you say? I would say, you know, and it goes back to what we said a week or so back. You have to make an agreement with yourself of who it is that you will be. Most of us have never decided truly decided who we will be. We've never taken time to get a sheet of paper and decide, write down, determine who it is that we will be. So we float around being anyone, you know, and we say, I'm not happy. Uh, my life is not going the way that I think it should. 
but you've never truly decided who you will be. What are your thoughts? That's it. That's it. And and believe me, this, it's as you think you are, not how I think, not how DiCarlo thinks, not how anyone thinks. It's as you think you are because they're not going to think the same as you. As a matter of fact, you're in only begotten. Yeah. And someone says, well, I've been told that's blasphemy. But, but, but no, think about it. There's, he, God doesn't, in the forest, he, he doesn't make, it, there's not two leaves alike. There's not two leaves exactly alike because God only makes one. Everyone is a one. Everyone is the one, but you have to realize it, and you realize it when you actually experience it, and you will experience it if you seek to do so. Seek to experience it because, and no, it's not blasphemy. Believe me, if God told you to do it, then it's not, it it certainly isn't blasphemy, and he did tell you to do so. Attitude awareness and imaginational control, that's all you need. That, that's really all you need. If you operate that, it opens the whole box. You get you get to play all the parts and do all the things that you want to do. If you get started, and that's the whole point, is that you have to start. I mean, if it's a poor start, you, you, uh, well, that's okay. Believe me, no one could have been <laughs> a poor starter than I was. As a matter of fact, it, it took me a couple of years just just to be able to to be silent for a time. I mean, really, truly silent. And it's it's you're told to be still. Well, still is is even more than silent. You understand? So that's what we're faced with. It's just beginning, wouldn't you say? I would say. And as we're beginning a new year, you have to decide who you will be. And in not deciding You've made a decision. So, Mr. Lindo, in closing, what would you say to the listener? Well, just be serious about what you say. In other words, choose it. Choose it to be lovely. Choose it to be exactly what you want. What else would you choose but to choose what it is that you truly want? But it must be a passion that you want it. And that's the thing. It, once you get a passion, no one has to encourage you anymore, right? I absolutely agree. You know, and then we're given to choose from whatsoever, and that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, it's all a miracle or none of it is. <laughs> so that's it. <clears throat> well, sir, well, yes. as, I, <laughs> as I was going to say, you know, it's been a pleasure. It's been a wonderful year with you. I look forward to this uh, coming year and our talks uh, that will come in the coming year. So uh, have a wonderful like and that. safe. I like that when you say coming years, not just a year. Oh, no, no. We got plenty of time together. <laughs> yeah, well, <clears throat> we'll see about that. <laughs> Well, sir, it's been a pleasure. Yes, it has been a pleasure. It always is. People just want to know what you did to be successful. The four CDs that I have out there, it's all there. If you took any one of the CDs and actually followed through on what you understood there, you could change your mind, change your world. All you have to do is just listen to the CDs. It's always reiteration and reiteration. I want to go back to the uh, board CD set. Go to metaphysicalarttheater.com. We can only mail in the U.S. right now, but for those who are outside the U.S., we can send you a digital bundle with everything so you'll get the enjoyment without waiting for it in the mail. Matter of fact, those who are in the U.S., if you would rather have the digital copies, we can do that as well. Metaphysicalarttheater.com.